Hi, everyone, and welcome to day 12 in our Advent of Rust adventure. I uh, will building a web API. And yesterday, we talked about uh, authentication. We saw that uh, by using a sign-in route, we hit the uh, GitHub OAuth uh, application, and then we receive a, a code. And let's have a look at the documentation to see what we can do uh, with this code. So let's go back to the code. Looking at the GitHub docs, uh, we can see that we can get the code from uh, the URL, and then we can exchange it again uh, against a, a token for a, for a token. So you pass the code to the uh, access token URL, and we will receive uh, an access token. So this is exactly what we are going to to do today. So let's go back to the code. Remember, when you it's sign in, we receive the code in the URL. So how can we retrieve this code? So first, in the get, uh, get callback method, what we can do is we can uh, receive the request. So it's an HTTP request. And let's have a look at what we have here. So uh, let's print something and request. If we do dot, we can uh, have a look at the, uh, at the method. And there is something which is uh, kind of interesting, uh, the query string. So the query string here should be uh, the code. So let's see if, it, if it's working. So let's do cargo run. And let me zoom a bit. If we sign in again, we are receiving the code. And it seemed that the query string is really interesting because we have the code here. So obviously we could split the string to get uh, the code or and, and do some, some parsing stuff. So Actix Web has a very nice feature, which is web query. And it takes a template as a, as a parameter. So let's import this query. We take, it takes like a generic argument. So we need to specify something like a struct, and it's going to be code uh, request, for instance, code request. And we can specify one field, which is going to be the string. So by doing this, now we can specify that this query is of type code request. Let's have a look at the error. It seems that uh, the code request needs to be deserializable. Yes, because when the requests come in, we need to be able to inspect it. So what we can do is we can add a new package. So cargo add, and we can do SIRD. So SIRD is a create to serialize and deserialize. And we can add the features, which is derive. By doing this, we can now write derive and deserialize. And by doing this, we can now um, tell to the Rust compiler that when we call slash callback, this will um, trigger this uh, function. And the request has a specific query type parameters, which is code request. Code request is containing a string. So now it, instead of uh, doing request.query string, I can do request dot. And as you can see, the autocompletion we can print the code directly. So let's run it. We can go run. Let's allow this. And if we sign in again, I have my code here. And if I look at the print statement, I have access to the code directly. So yeah, this is great. Uh, this is a good news. Uh, so now I have access to the request code. The second step would be, uh, if we follow the doc, to exchange this code against um, for an access token. So we need to do a post request with some parameters. So we have the client ID, the client secret, and the code. Actually, accept JSON is, uh, is uh, not mandatory in, on the doc, so we can skip it. But yeah, we are going to, to need um, to have like a HTTP client to perform a, per, uh, a post request. So we can add that. Um, it's another create cargo add, and it's called request. 
So request is a very convenient create to perform HTTP request. So um, maybe we can create a new function here. It's going to be asynchronous because uh, we're doing HTTP request. Uh, let's call it um, exchange code for token. And it will return, let's say, a string for now. So we need uh, to create a client. So let's uh, do client. So use request.client.new. And then we can do client.post. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be um, a post request. We need the URL. So the URL is get up access token. So we can copy it. So there's two options. Uh, you can uh, specify the URL uh, like this, or maybe um, in more convenient way, convenient way is to add it to the uh, end file. So I've just done it before, but I can redo it. So it's uh, GitHub. Um, token URL, and you can paste uh, this URL. So if we go back to the code, we can say it's stdn environment variable, and let's go back to make sure we copy the right string, and this is it. And remember, this is returning a result. So uh, for today, we are going to unwrap it, and this is bad. So let's add a commenter. This is a comment. This is bad. So we don't want to do that, but uh, we will fix it tomorrow. Uh, first, let's make sure it, it, this is working. And tomorrow, we will fix uh, the error. So yeah, we have a client. We can do a post to this URL. And if we have a look at the payload, it seems that we require the client ID, the client secret, as well as the code. So let's build uh, a parameter object payload object, and it's going to be um, an array. The first field is going to be the client ID. And client ID uh, would be against, uh, again, read from the environment variable. So client ID, std, and variable client ID. Once again, we will unwrap. This is really bad, and we will fix it tomorrow. So client ID. If we follow the doc, we will also need the client secrets. So let's do that. Client secrets. We can do the exact same stuff. Secret ID. And finally, we would need um, the code. And the code, we um, maybe need to pass it as a string here, a reference to a string, or actually a string. Let's do a ref here. And it's going to be string from the code. We need to pass uh, when we will need to call it. So client secret not found because it's client secret ID. So my payload is uh, my payload is now ready. So I can um, post it. So my client. So my client is now ready. My payload is ready. So I can post it uh, with a uh, form. It's going to be the, be the payload. I can reorder this a bit. I would need to um, set some headers. Uh, the header would be uh, the accept. And it's going to be application.json because uh, slash JSON. So because uh, this is accept JSON, this will be transformed to, uh, to a header. That's fine. So client, post, form, payload, then we can send it. Of course, we need to do uh, a wait um, because uh, it's async. 
and we are going to say this is uh, going to be uh, the result. Let's just return something. So the compiler would be happy. Yeah, so payload. Maybe we should pass this as a ref. Await, there is no such things, and result. So maybe what we can do is uh, we can, uh, results would be um, a, of type result. So either uh, a result or an error. So what we can do here is once again to unwrap it. And once again, let's add a comment. This is bad. We need to refactor two more. And the result is uh, of kind response. So maybe what we can do is we can print the response. As maybe um, text for now. Response, actually it's result. Let's call it response. It's going to be more clear. And we need to await as well. Cool. Uh, so let's 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 try this. Oh, actually, we need to uh, to call it. So get call back. We have the code. So now maybe we can exchange rec.code and we need to await it. Let's try to run it. Yeah, go run. Let's allow it. And if we are going to the signing route again, we have a callback. And then the response is OK. And we have an access token. So that's great. Uh, so yeah, this is great. We now have uh, our access token. Uh, we would need to parse it. We would need to. Uh, to fix those uh, very uh, ugly unwrap, but that's for uh, tomorrow. So uh, thank you so much for following this adventure and see you tomorrow for day 13. Have a good one.